Welcome to this session on using technology to support the dementia care workforce as they respond to behaviours, stress and distress in people living with dementia. My name is Dr Julie Christie and I'm here to talk to you about Dementia Support UK, which is a service delivered by Hammond Care. Hammond Care are a global organisation who promote quality dementia care through research, evaluation, practice, education and consultancy. In Australia, we are an established provider of groundbreaking service in the care of older people and people with dementia, including palliative care expertise. We combine expertise in design and relationship-based practice and deliver a national programme funded by the Australian Government called Dementia Support Australia. This service provides support to the aged care sector as they respond to behaviours and symptoms of dementia and it has just published the world's largest population-based study of behaviours in dementia and importantly the interventions at work. I'll refer to this later. Our UK business works with individuals and organisations who wish to benefit from this international expertise. Dementia Support UK, or DSUK for short, is what I am talking about today. And it is our UK based health technology service, which provides an accessible route for the health and social care sector to engage with this expertise. DSUK is a subscription service with access to specialist resources and dementia care consultancy. This non pharmacological relationship based product focuses on behaviours, stress and distress in people with dementia. It delivers a better understanding of the behaviours. This is also known as behaviours and psychological symptoms of dementia, or BPSD for short. And I will talk about this in a minute. Problem solving time with a specialist consultant, and it builds personal and organisational confidence and capacity in the care of people living with dementia. In this session, I'm going to take you through why this is needed, how it works, and the impact of our Innovate UK funded care home pilot, which took place in England last year. The last slide of this presentation has my contact details, and I would welcome any questions you may have after this. Please use my email to contact me directly. Behaviours and psychological symptoms of dementia are common and associated with hospitalisations, caregiver stress, cognitive deterioration, polypharmacy, inappropriate use of antipsychotic medication and a poor quality of life. This was exacerbated by COVID-19. The impact on care homes and people living with dementia has been devastating. The usual support networks have been interrupted and there has been little meaningful family contact due to shielding. This is a pressing issue in terms of human, societal and financial cost. We are dependent on a skilled care workforce and this requires targeted support to achieve. A study of dementia costs in England in 2019 calculated that the total annualised costs for health and social care usage was 24.2 billion. And a quarter of this is related to people with dementia and their families. People with severe dementia have high care costs because they experience behaviours and psychological symptoms of dementia and they're often living with comorbidities. Care home staff therefore deal with complex issues. BPSD is an umbrella term for a diverse range of neuropsychiatric non-cognitive symptoms that are either instigated by unmet needs, example pain, or linked to psychiatric symptoms, example hallucinations. 
As such, it's difficult for staff to untangle the cause and the impact of any interventions they might have at hand. There are various triggers for BPSD, such as staff practices, pain, discomfort, environmental stressors, over or under stimulation, as well as living with uncertainty, loss of role, confusion, fear, and thus applying tailored multimodal interventions is the best practice approach. Through our research in Australia, we know what works in terms of problem solving and non-pharmacological interventions and real-time responses by staff are key. Care home staff increasingly care for people with complex needs. Care staff stress in doing this is not routinely recognised in day-to-day -day caring. We seldom talk about the impact or burden of BPSD on paid carers, yet this is widely recognised in family carers. Staffing is a care home provider's biggest investment. It's also their biggest expense. But the costs of not ensuring staff support can include sickness, agency costs for cover, risk of reduced quality of care, polypharmacy, increased falls and hospitalisations. The business costs of this can include reduced care quality commission ratings, increased complaints and brand damage. This can ultimately affect future admissions to the care establishment. System costs include avoidable hospital bed days, increased antipsychotic prescribing, use of more expensive health and social care services than would otherwise be needed. In addition, there were more than 50,000 avoidable emergency admissions for people with dementia in 2016 and 17. Potentially inappropriate prescribing remains a persistent issue for people living with dementia. Our ambition is to create better services for people with dementia. In 2018, the Alzheimer's Society found that 23% of dementia care services in England were found to be failing. 49% of UK adults believe that people with dementia experience worse care and support than people with other long-term care conditions. We can and we must do better. We believe Dementia Support UK offers a solution to many of these challenges. It's a relatively low cost technology and we believe it is more effective than the current offerings in relation to staff support. It provides easy, affordable access to specialist dementia services. It complements supports and alleviates burden on stretched health and social care. Over the period June to December 2020, with funding from Innovate UK and Hammond Care, we delivered online resources for care home staff in England to download and use and provided consultation time with dementia care experts for more complex care scenarios. This was facilita facilitated through our purpose built website. Following a review of the service model and our offering, we received an extension grant from Innovate UK to refine the model for market, including the development of an app to build the service around the needs of busy mobile staff. The current commercial service is now focused on a digital health subscription with an app interface, which facilitates access to a newly designed web page of resources. DS UK was developed as a business innovation in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. But the feedback we have had on how staff experience, how, how they feel it impacts, what it's demonstrated to them in terms of application within care homes, shows that it is something that high quality dementia care services can use moving forward. It's a relationship-based digital health technology 
that provides real-time support to care and support teams who are working with people who have dementia and responding to behaviours and psychological symptoms of dementia. The app is free and has content on how to respond to different scenarios on the spot. It then links through to our website, where again, we have a good range of open access resources. We also have a subscription package, which provides access to a full library of resources, research highlights, an e-learning suite, live chat with a consultant, and video consultation time with a dementia care experts. Organisations can select the number of permitted users within their group who would have access to this enhanced service and the service is priced according to this. Users can then choose to use the resources in a self-service mode or engage with live chat or use care consultant time for more complex scenarios aimed at breaking down the barriers to instant advice and support to avoid care package breakdown. We assist with three key areas, deprescribing planning, reablement and pain management. The service is not clinical and works respectfully with the health and care networks who support the person within their care home. We use the neuropsychi Neuropsychiatric Inventory Questionnaire, NPI, to identify the presence of 12 neuropsychiatric symptoms observed in people with dementia. These include aberrant motor behaviour, aggression and agitation, anxiety, apathy, appetite and eating behaviour, delusions, depression, disinhibition, euphoria, hallucinations, irritability and nighttime behaviours. For each domain, a score is given for severity and distress. Person-centred psychosocial interventions are considered a key therapeutic approach for supporting people with dementia experiencing behaviours. This was evidenced in our Australian study of the Dementia Support Australia programme. This study aimed to evaluate the impact of this approach on referrals citing BPSD from care homes and used a retrospective analysis to investigate the clinical impact. The key finding was that the NPI scores were significantly reduced as a result of the interventions provided by the DSA programme. The DS UK programme equips care staff with the same intervention skills as demonstrated in Australia. But what we've recognised is that staff need ready access to this advice. So let's put this in a practice context. Tom was a recent admission to his care home. He was a very fit man with Alzheimer's disease. He'd been admitted to his care home as an emergency during the pandemic as he had been lost in the local area several times. People were concerned about his safety. He hadn't settled at all and was frequently up overnight. He became agitated when staff tried to assist him out of other people's rooms or direct him to his own room. Staff were limited in what they could do due to the COVID restrictions, as some of the residents were shielding and some areas of the care home were not open. They were concerned about Tom as he hadn't had a proper night's sleep since his admission to them. They were also concerned that other residents were unsettled and that their privacy was being interrupted. So they were looking for the best solution for everyone involved. At the most recent report, overnight staff conveyed to the day shift once again that Tom had been up. 
With access to the DSUK service, staff were then able to discuss at handover, contacting DSUK and how they might use their service. The day shift did this after breakfast and the important morning routines were out of the way and we were able to discuss the situation that morning. This allowed the staff to plan that day for an evening routine for that night. There were a number of factors explored in relation to Tom's speedy transition into care. This was at a time when staff had limited space within the care home. They also hadn't had time to get to know Tom properly before his admission. We looked at all of the potential issues in priority order. Tom was due to see his GP in the following days, so we recommended a review of his medication. We also recommended that staff try and contact family or friends who might know Tom to consult about his nighttime routine. And although Tom lived alone, several of his family members recalled that he liked to eat a bowl of cereal before going to bed, which they had always found funny. But we now wondered, could that serve as a cue to Tom that bedtime was approaching? Or was he up overnight because he was hungry? Staff received help from our consultants on getting to know you strategies and we looked at meaningful occupation during the day. Tom had been a very active man when he was at home. One of the staff had an old washing machine. What we discussed was moving the machine into the care home garden and letting Tom work on it during the day. Tom also had access to the garden until late into the day. We encouraged staff to let Tom spend time in the garden if this was where he was most happy. His GP visited and reviewed his medication. Staff kept a diary of Tom's behaviour to review this over the forthcoming month. With access to the DSUK app, they can download behaviour templates and a practice guide on promoting sleep. Some of the team chose to do one of our e-learning modules on engagement after seeing the ways in which activities could promote sleep and enjoyment. There was also a discussion about whether the activities on offer were meaningful for the other men who were resident. And there was a discussion on starting a men's shed in order to promote friendships and occupation. The Dementia Support UK website has a product guide on men's sheds and how you can instigate them in your care home setting. The staff were delighted to report that three nights after they contacted us, Tom had his first settled night. Although, in retrospect, maybe the cereal was the key to the whole thing. I guess we'll never know. So moving on to impact and benefits. The pilot ran from June to December 2020. During that time, we had 5,901 website visitors. 63 consultations took place for complex issues and we helped staff to deliver 558 interventions. I touched on complexity earlier in this talk. The pilot revealed the sheer complexity of care that care home staff respond to in their day to day work. Our analysis of the neuropsychiatric inventory questionnaire, which took place during our consultation referrals, revealed this heat map of complexity. We can now create data sets which visualise the behaviours which care staff most frequently require support with, how often these behaviours feature in referrals, the reported severity of the behaviours and the impact specific behaviours have on care staff stress. This can then be localised to individual care homes, groups, areas and regions 
depending on the uptake of the app and the commissioning requirements. But we believe this is very important information and the link to paid caregiver stress is really important to focus on if we are to have any impact on potential staff burnout following the pandemic. We have reviewed this, uh, this model at key milestones connected to Innovate UK's evidence and reporting requirements. What we now know are the referral characteristics of residents whose behaviour staff find difficult to support. We know the neuropsychiatric symptoms of dementia or behaviours that care staff find challenging to support and their prevalence, severity and impact. And we know the types of interventions that have the potential to change care trajectories and avoid more costly health sector responses. These findings have now been written up into a peer reviewed journal paper with an international publication. And we have a full report of the impact and benefits over the pilot period, June to December. From our respondent feedback received, we were able to report that 71% of care staff reported a reduction in the person with dementia's behaviour. 65% reported reduced staff carer stress linked to this behaviour. 65% again reported that they had avoided the use of a more expensive health resource and 82% felt confident in using Dementia Support UK advice and resources with that same person again, should it be needed, or with other residents in their care who might be in similar circumstances. In addition, there is a lot of potential for other health specialities to be included in this offering, for example, our design and palliative care expertise. The app is currently a standalone technology. However, it works compatibly with other systems and as it's a beta model, can be revised and adapted in line with consumer and peer feedback. The accessibility of the DSUK service with the introduction of an app means that it can be used by both low and high tech focused organisations. It can be used in care homes who have one computer, limited Wi-Fi, or it can be used by teams using tablets and phones who prefer the app interface. We pride ourselves on providing a meaningful individual response to individual care homes and organisations by getting to know them and their values and objectives, how they like to work and what's important to them and their staff. Our subscription prices start at £2.5,000 a year. Depending on the number of permitted users, the price increases. Large organisations and staff groups can arrange a bespoke price for 40 or more users from a single organisation. And we've pitched the offer to deliver on both price and to deliver on quality and availability. The solution is scalable. It's low cost, high impact and delivered via a model or subscription model, which the care sector is familiar with. The model lends itself to individual, organisational, block, local and national subscription models. Depending on what works for each individual area, it can be used in any sector and can be developed for individuals and family carers at a later date. Indeed, the app is being used freely now by lots of people. The service uses a combination of technology and human interaction. 
Relationships are at the heart of Hammond Care. And so relationships are at the heart of this model too. And if you would like to know more or to connect with us on this or any other issue related to dementia, then please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you.